Yeah. Okay. What were they taught at that time was the religion of Islam at that time? Well, uh, uh, surprisingly, um, well, let me say this. Okay. What was established was a uh, black nationalist movement mm -hmm. um, identifying with Muslims of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly what was said by the preacher mm -hmm. when he began preaching yes. in the temple. Right. He said, if you join on to your own kind mm -hmm. and, and as a Muslim, then you will automatically become a citizen of every Muslim uh, country or state mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. That's what we were told. Right. So it, it identified with the Muslim world and with the religion of Al Islam, the religion mm -hmm. of the Muslims. Yeah. Now, in the early Muslims, when they would accept Islam, I mean, what was the reaction of their families in the communities when, you know, a uh, majority of the people mm -hmm. were uh, uh, Baptists or yeah. some sort of Christians, and all of a sudden now yeah. you are a Muslim, like they used mm -hmm. to say sometimes? Well, most of them condemned us, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't want to have anything to do with us. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they didn't understand us and they were afraid mm -hmm. to identify with us or to associate with us. Mm -hmm. Many times um, you, you couldn't stay with your own re Christian relatives anymore. Mm -hmm. They rejected you. Mm -hmm. And we rejected them. Right, right. <laughs> and, and I mean, how was it that, uh, I think because I know, we know for a fact that eventually the community came around to accept and really appreciate Islam and Muslims. Certainly. And, and what part of that was the, uh, because people were reformed in their behavior, in their dress, in their mannerisms. Mm -hmm. How big was that in, in attracting, because in Islam, here in America, most of the people accept Islam as our brothers and sisters and uncles and cousins. How, how big part of it was the, the, the clean living, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the dressing sharply and trying to do something for your own self, yeah. uh, a factor in attracting people to come to? Uh, the um, Temple of Islam insisted upon strict obedience mm -hmm. to the laws of the Temple of Islam. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was that you had to be neatly dressed, clean dressed, mm -hmm. um, wear, come to the temple with a shirt and tie, mm -hmm. like I'm dressed now. But let me ask you about, you know, it's another question. How did the tie turn out to be the bow tie? Who, who, did somebody decide a bow tie or was that the cleanest way you could look? Uh, that, that came that at the end of my father's leadership, the oh. bow tie. Ah, okay. Um, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you yes, the neatness, yes. the neatness, the cleanliness, etc. Mm -hmm. And agreeing with you that that did impress mm -hmm. Um, Muslim, uh, non-Muslim, pardon me, mm -hmm. non-Muslims, and everybody, mm -hmm. whites and blacks alike, uh, were very impressed with the appearance of the members, uh, brothers and the members of the Nation of Islam, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, belonging to the Temple of Islam in America. Right. Yes, it's very important. But um, uh, what attracted, them, what attracted uh, the uh, blacks to join the Nation of Islam, or the Holy Temple of Islam in America, uh, was more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the esoteric language, the secret language mm -hmm. of the nation of Islam, mm -hmm. given to it by its mysterious founder, Farad, mm -hmm. spelled Fe Re Dal, Farad. Mm -hmm. You know what Farad means? Mm -hmm. Mr. John Doe, yeah. Mr. So and So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that tells you something about this man. Why would he pick a name that, had, that is no name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but you're speaking about names. And in the beginning, when people would come and become Muslim, they got like a, an, uh, an X or something before yeah. they actually got a name. Yes. And then what was the basis of that, assigning someone an X, you know, X on a number or something like yes. that? Yes. Well, they were promised Islamic names, Muslim names. Right. But, uh, and they were told that you temporarily you have uh, an X, meaning that you're unknown. Mm -hmm. Unknown. Mm -hmm. X, unknown. Right. And how did they become known? Uh, they became known uh, by following the teachings uh, from Mr. Farad. Mm -hmm. From Mr. Farad. 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 But Farad. 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 From Mr. Farad. They, they follow his teaching. They were promised if they follow his teaching. Uh, they would eventually be connected with the holy city of Mecca mm -hmm. uh, and be Muslims with the Muslims of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was something interesting to me is that at that time when uh, um, people started going around saying, Salaamu Alaikum, you know, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, mm -hmm. 
that some of the, even the indigenous Muslim population would kind of suppress that talk only among themselves, not out in the public. Uh -huh. So they say when they saw the uh, American Muslims going around saying, Salaamu Alaikum and, you know, Alhamdulillah and MashaAllah, they felt ashamed that we, we were hiding this, you know, trying mm -hmm. to blend in, and here they are embracing it completely. Yeah. So, I mean, I say that to say, what was the effect on the community when all of a sudden these American citizens mm -hmm. start speaking Arabic words and using mm -hmm. Arabic phrases and Arabic terms? Yes. The effect on the Americans? Yes. Well, we were, we were slowly growing in, in numbers, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until around 1959 and 60 mm -hmm. that we um, really uh, became known in America mm -hmm. to the American public. Right. Uh, yes. Um, the the uh, police department knew about us, the FBI knew about us, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the general public did not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's important it's important also for us to know that there were other influences mm -hmm. um, that had already become popular in the in the African American community yes. of Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, there was a man named Noble Drew Ali. They called him Noble Drew Ali. Yes, and he had um, a same a movement. He called uh, Islam, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and he had a um, a Quran. He called Quran, but it was not the Quran. Mm -hmm. It was a little pamphlet, you know, that he wrote himself. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Mr. Farad came behind him, behind him, like uh, maybe two years behind him. Mm -hmm. um, and there was another movement that's very important for us to know about to see what kind of circumstances shaped even Mr. Farad's idea, you know. Sure. There was a black man who had a big black church. Of um, of hundreds, thousands, maybe he had a thousand or more followers, mm -hmm. and that was big back. Then.